Uh, I'm Mark Ray. I'm director of the Lighting Research Center at uh, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in Troy, New York. Um, we've been doing lighting now for almost a quarter century. Um, we've seen just about all the technologies uh, come through the lab. Uh, and of course today, you know, solid state lighting is really the hot topic. And so that dominates probably, oh, I don't know, 40% of our funding now is solid state lighting related. If you look at the very foundations of what light is, um, it goes back to what you might call cognitive sciences, is really the biophysics of how photons are transduced into neural signals uh, for information in the brain. So it comes out of a long tradition of sort of physics, uh, photometry, colorimetry, uh, and that tradition has lasted a long time. Um, and really, forms the central core, how we measure light, what do we mean by light. Uh, it's very much a, a cognitive sciences area where the outcomes are measured by the human response to light. And that's been a century tradition. It's interesting that uh, there really are no new tricks here. It's, uh, it, it's, uh, light is light. And uh, the technology that, that generates that light uh, has impact on, as I said, these biological systems. But I will say, quite honestly, that in parallel, um, the discovery of a, a brand new photoreceptor in the eye has really stimulated a lot of work and a lot of crossover with solid state lighting. So solid state lighting has been a real uh, stimulus to the science of uh, the biophysics, if you will, of, of how biology responds to light. And so really our agenda is uh, probably 30% of our research program now is devoted to these biological effects. And you can really attribute that transformation to solid state lighting and this discovery of this no photoreceptor. If you really want to maintain uh, your biological rhythms, and we're all familiar when they get disjointed when you um, fly to London or Shanghai, you know that we have jet lag and, and that's really a a change in our light-dark pattern, and we're trying to catch up to that as, as we go along. Well, we've built these environments that really shade us from the bright sky during the daytime, and then at night we have electric lighting that gets our light levels up. And the biological system is really looking for a robust 24-hour change in the light-dark pattern. And we do that through the eyes. It doesn't matter how much light hits the back of your hand or the top of your head. It has to go into the eyes to do this. So this system is looking sort of a gears. It's looking for a regular light-dark pattern to mesh with my biological clock. And when that, those gears get messed up, then you have poor sleep, uh, you've got indigestion, uh, you've got poor performance. All of these issues are derivatives of the fact that your biological clock becomes asynchronous with this natural 24-hour light-dark cycle. So you can imagine that if I'm shielding you from bright light in the daytime like I am in the basement of this building, or else I'm out watching hockey at 10 p.m., uh, that system starts to get messed up. So this ability to control the full 24-hour light-dark cycle, even if you're not on a jet plane going to London or Shanghai, is essential really for what we call sustainability or sustainable buildings or however we're going to do that. And this is this new field. Uh, we've always known, obviously, about the visual effects of light, but these non-visual effects seem to have profound consequences. The long run, shift workers, um, uh, nurses, uh, policemen, taxi cab drivers, have this same problem and it leads to long term chronic health problems, anything from diabetes, uh, obesity, cardiovascular disease, breast cancer, the list goes on and on on how disrupting this regular 24 hour pattern it has this profound both acute effect and as well as this long term chronic effect which is just beginning to be understood. Solid state lighting which is nice you can begin to tune that both temporally and spatially and spectrally now allows you to have a personal light treatment or a device that allows you to keep track of that uh, much like a monitor for, you know, diabetes, um, this is a device that, that we're working on that could help you maintain your 24-hour pattern um, without really uh, changing your lifestyle, but being able to modulate the light in such a way that you can stay and train or adapted to that particular environment, uh, that's that, that uh, schedule that you really want to live for your own lifestyle. That's the exciting prospects, I think, for the future. Uh, all the major companies, uh, many of the new players in lighting um, 
have uh, embraced this idea and you're beginning to see it become more mainstream. But I think the real um, beneficiaries of, of solid state lighting have been really the associated industries like automotive. Um, there's been a two year transition, literally just a tipping point. They went from filament based sources to almost all solid state. Um, and so you've got uh, aviation community now doing that same transition from filament based to solid state lighting. Um, so the industries associated that are the OEMs really are the ones that I think are very keen on um, taking advantage of the inherent capabilities of solid state lighting both in energy and also again these visual or non-visual effects of light. You know lighting is simultaneously too easy and too hard. Um, you know, you can screw in a light bulb and see, and that gets you 80% of the way. We're really talking about the next 20%. And to do that, both in terms of energy efficiency, but also delivering value, like safety on roadways, um, we just believe uh, as an act of faith that if we put street lights in, um, the roads are safer. But is that true? Um, and so really being able to frame that question, being able to tune the light to really deliver better visibility, less glare, better color, are those are the things that you really uh, are the challenge to be able to demonstrate that value. So you have the potential, but you really have to ask the right questions to be able to extract that value and then put that into a standard or a recommendation. And that's really, again, that's the hard part. Uh, the easy, you can get 80% of the air just turning the lights on, but it doesn't mean it's the optimized uh, lighting solution.